it hath pleased them verily, and their debtors they are. For the Gentiles have been made partakers of their spiritual things, their duty is also to minister unto them in carnal things. So anyway, it appears that uh, here in 2 Corinthians, the 8th chapter, he's referring to the offering that the saints in Macedonia and also Achaia, which is another word for Greece, that they had made for the saints at Jerusalem, for the poor saints. And he mentioned that it was like their duty because in a spiritual sense, well, without the Jewish people being the first partakers of, of the new covenant, then um, the Gentile church would not have been brought in. It, it all was important. The connection was important. He was bringing out here. Uh, so there was a, a debt he's referring to it in a spiritual sense. And so they had uh, urged those at Macedonia to uh, give an offering for the sake of the poor Jews in Jerusalem. And, and they did that. Obviously they were gracious. It seems that from the 8th chapter of 2 Corinthians that they really, the Macedonian people, really opened up their heart. And even though it, it sounds like they weren't wealthy, but they, they gave what they could. And um, he goes on to hope that also these in, Cor in Corinth would also give a gift that would also go to Jerusalem to the poor saints. And so if we continue with verse 5 of chapter 8 here, and this they did, not as we hope, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God, insomuch that we desired Titus, that as he had begun, so he would also finish in you the same grace also. Therefore, as ye abound in everything, in faith, in utterance, in knowledge, and in all diligence, and in your love to us, see that you abound in this grace also. So they were urging here that also the church at Corinth, Corinth would also um, be forward and, and give willingly a love offering. Verse 8 says, I speak not by commandment, but by occasion of the forwardness or willingness of others, and to prove, meaning to test, the sincerity of your love. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might be rich. So he was hoping, using the Lord Jesus Christ as an example, who certainly didn't have to make himself poor. It was because he loved us so much that he came to earth making himself poor, taking on man, becoming a man, becoming among those that were his creation, putting on flesh, that Jesus came making himself poor for our sakes. And uh, Paul was using this as an example, hoping that uh, the church at Corinth would also be willing to um, also give what they could for the cause of the Lord. And verse 10 says, And herein I give my advice, for this is expedient for you, meaning necessary, who have begun before not only to do, but also to be forward a year ago. It seems that maybe there was a purpose at an earlier time to do this. It refers to a year ago. And verse 11 says, Now therefore perform the doing of it, that as there was a readiness to will, so there may be a performance also out of that which ye have done. So other in other words, I think there had been a willingness to, to help the Christians in, in Jerusalem, but perhaps they didn't have, the, it just didn't work out for one reason or the other. Verse 12 maybe explains a bit, for if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man hath, and not according to that which he hath not. For I mean not that other men be eased and ye burdened. In verse 14 says, but by an equality that now at this time your abundance may be a supply for their want, that their abundance also may be a supply for your want, that they may be equality. So I, I think it, it seems that um, 
there had been a willingness, but for some reason they just weren't able at that point to give. Somehow it, it didn't work out in verse 12. I believe that's what it's referring to. And um, then in verse 14 he's talking about, you know, it's it, now at this time your abundance, because it, it seemed at this point they were abundant enough in, in, in their worldly estates or, or in, in their um, in their substance, sustenance and, and substance that they could then give what was needed for their want. So um, at that point it seems like they were now able to, to give toward this other cause. And verse 15 refers to scripture in Exodus, it says, as it is written, he that had gathered much had nothing over, and he that had gathered little had no lack. So this is referring to the time in the wilderness that the children of Israel were gathering manna, when the Lord rained down manna on their behalf so they could eat and be sustained, and um, it was recorded that those that gathered much, some of them gathered more than they needed, and it didn't benefit them. They still had nothing over, and those that gathered little, they didn't have a lack either. It was the Lord that multiplied it and, and gave them every person according to their, their needs. So the gathering much or the gathering little didn't really um, make much difference in this case. So um, that's what he's referring to in, in the 15th verse of this 8th chapter. But verse 16 says, But thanks be to God, which put the same earnest care into the heart of Titus for you. For indeed he accepted the exhortation, but being more forward of his own accord, he went unto you. And we have sent with him the brother whose praise is in the gospel throughout all the churches. And not that only, but who was also chosen the churches to travel with us with this grace, which is administered by us to the glory of the same Lord and declaration of your ready mind. So obviously it sounds to me that Titus was the one that organized this, that he went first to the, the people in Macedonia and they gave what they could for the cause here, for those poor Christians there in Jerusalem. And then he also did go to the church in Corinth and I believe they also gave. In fact, I know they did because again, referring back to the 15th chapter of Romans, that 26th verse that I read, it said, for it hath pleased them of Macedonia and Achaia to make a certain contribution for the poor saints which are at Jerusalem. So obviously they all all the churches in these areas gave and uh, it went there, you know the, the needs were supplied therefore whichever case it was and I'm sure that when they gave for the cause of the Lord the Lord also supplied their needs because you know when we give on the behalf of somebody else the Lord sees to it and he makes a way sometimes I've, I've heard wonderful stories where people gave of their last dollar or their last ten dollars or, or whatever and uh, they just felt so impressed to do so. I believe Brother Lance had a story like that and um, didn't even know then where the next uh, dollar would come from. But miracles happened because they're their willingness to give and, and 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 surely that's the way it is in the kingdom of God if everybody does their part verse 14 I believe in this chapter is talking about everybody doing their part doing the thing that's in their heart we're all one body and the Lord calls us to different functions and different offices and we all have um, we all can give in a different manner I mean we all can can't give a thousand dollars for a cause. Maybe we can only give one dollar in some cases. But the Lord knows how much we all can give. And I know this has been so true with Last Trumpet. Um, we, we've never had to um, 
put a fee on any of the things that we offered. We never had to beg for money or any of that. But what has happened is, in some cases, people are not able to give. 